you, Michael. All right, for your uh, next comic, uh, some call him the Dynamo, some call him Hey You in the Bushes. But to uh, the audience uh, for the evening, he will be Charlie uh, Merritt. Woo! Whoever wrote that was a comic genius, I've got to say. Okay, professional, I had some water. Feeling good. How do you operate this? It's like a robotic penis. Right. Okay, um, my name's Charles Merrick, uh, from the UK, Kent, known as the Garden of England. Uh, various attractions there. We've got the Archbishop's Palace, uh, Leeds Castle, you can get married there if you want to. Uh, we also have the Carriage Museum, a uh, great attraction, ladies. I've got a weekend pass, so uh, <laughs> anytime you want to get in, 17th and 18th century only, though. Uh, <laughs> as, I found it quite difficult to settle into America, actually. I mean, I just figured, hmm, I could go to Europe, go to Prague, go to some interesting places. places. No, I'm going to go to America because everybody speaks English, and I have seen a lot of episodes of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> the OC, I've got the general gist of it. I had this image, I had this image of flying into California, and um, just playing Phantom Planet as I flew in. Okay, California, I'm living it, I'm Seth, I'm brilliant. <laughs> um, of course, uh, I'm in Maryland. People often say, why are you in Maryland? It was my third choice. I'm stupid. Oh. <laughs> People warned me, you know. Uh, and it is hard to settle in. I'm on a, uh, I'm on a corridor of, um, I'm not sure if it would be unfair to call them bros, but they're bros. Um, and there's a lot of, there's communication difficulties. I, I find that I have to, to talk to people, I have to uh, start and end every sentence with the word yo. Otherwise, you know, but I, I'm not very good at it because I'll just sort of, I'll, I'll be talking about tea. I am a stereotype, I drink a lot of tea, I say bloody hell, wanker all the time, and all this things. And I'm like, don't stereotype me, because I'm a stereotype. And I'll say, yo, uh, would you like a cup of tea, yo? And they'll be like, yeah, I'm doing with that. <laughs> and I don't understand any of it at all. I mean, it's really, it's really difficult. If you meet a girl, they often, and the stereotype is true, I found a lot of girls, and they'll be like, oh my god, I love your accent. And I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just be like, thank you. Uh, oh my god, how did you... I've been working on it for 20 years now, actually. Yeah. You don't know what to say to it. Is it a compliment? It's just like, I love who you are and everything you're about. Like, and I feel like some American guys like really resent it. And I'm like, I don't mean to do it. I just speak. It's, you know, it's not, it's not the Beatles haircut I'm sporting that's attracting the ladies. It's, you know, it's the voice. But this corridor is getting me down slightly. These people love video games, they love them. A bit of Halo does them good. I walked past my neighbour's room the other day. He was, he was standing on a chair with, a, uh, with, a, with one of the remotes in his hand. He was going, oh, 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 killing frenzy. I was like, wanking frenzy? Fucking hell. He was going at this wireless remote like a mother bitch. No, uh, it's, I'm not joking, they're terrible. I mean, 3.30 a.m. I had to go to, um, they were making noise. And, and I live in Dorchester Hall, and it looks like when you walk in, I was very depressed to find the, the place looked like a prison cell. I thought, what crime have I not committed yet to be put in this prison cell? I've decorated it since with Che Guevara posters because I'm a student. Wall to wall Che Guevara posters. Um, yes, yeah, so, so uh, I've kind of settled in in that respect, but the walls are actually paper thin, despite the fact they look like very solid bricks, they're paper thin. And I could all, the, all I could hear was people wooing at Halo, like, Oh my god, there's a sniper up there! Oh my god, I'm dead! <laughs> and, and so I was like, right, fucking I'm giving a piece of my mind, put on my robe, put the hood up just to be more intimidating. <laughs> Did it up, marched downstairs. No, sorry, not downstairs. <laughs> Across the hall. I was like, fuck, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. fucking comes up this time of night, I've got an essay to do. <laughs> so... Hi, um, guys. Uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, I was wondering if maybe uh, just turn it down a little bit. I can I can hear it slightly, and it's 3 a.m. And I was just wondering, if possibly you could turn it down. I'm throwing a curtsy. Um, <laughs> They're like, yeah, sorry. Just go on, shake them. They'll think twice, if not three times, before they make more noise. <sighs> like I said, professional. I need to look at my cards. Um, I've done this in a really incoherent way, but I would like to talk about um, sex. And I'm the last person that really ought to be talking about sex because, um, you know, as a British person, we are we are an apologetic race. I'm sorry to say, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you missed most. Um, and my my particular brand of sex, I'm afraid, is apologetic sex. There's a lot, there's a lot of thrusting and so. Sort of, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry again. Oh, sorry. I, I, I should probably just leave, shouldn't I? Sorry. Sorry to trouble you. You know. 
No lady deserves that, that kind of approach. <laughs> and when it comes to the relationship side of things, oh, look out. Did anybody ever play Pokemon? No, you weren't that sad. I did, and I still play it. DS. Oh, it's great. Um, anyway, you had to catch Pokemon in Safari Zone occasionally. It's slightly tenuous, and if you can play Pokemon, you won't understand it. But um, you, if you had to approach, the train had to approach the Pokemon. You had to sort of creep up to it. If you crept up too close to that, it would say, Wild Jigglypuff has run away scared. I am the Wild Jigglypuff. Girl gets too close to me, I'm over the hills. You know, get, getting away from them quick, smart. You know, I make awkward, I make awkward comments, like, um, with the condom thing. You know, I'll get one out and they'll be like, what's that? And because it's, it's, it's English. And I'm like, it's a standard number. They think it's natural make, standard number. No, it wasn't. You know, I just, I sound ridiculous. I'm like, it's a standard number, let me use it, please. <laughs> begging, begging with them. And also, I'm a very shallow individual. No, no, no woman is good enough. I demand perfection. Uh, in, in my women. I don't think that's uh, too much to us. Um, it's not too much to us. Um, you know, they've got to look good. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, ladies, who doesn't love a cross star, eh? You know, I'm sporting one here. I think it's gorgeous. Uh, other people have told me different. Uh, I like it. It's here to stay, as is my beard, called Pires. Uh, it's not so much a beard as black smoke, but um, <laughs> it, it gives it a cross and overall look of, you know, an artist or something. Actually, I bought some... Uh, in England, I, was, I really wanted to look uh, more than I am. I've got very little emotional soul. So what I, I did was I bought some uh, square... I actually got my eyes tested for this. Um, uh, um, <laughs> I got my eyes tested for this. Unfortunately, I didn't need glasses, but I bought some anyway. Glass inside them, square, black ones, you know, so it was like, oh, I own a Mac. <laughs> I'm a solo intellectual. <laughs> they get me started on Mac computers. <laughs> The reason I first moved over to a Mac? Simple. I was tired of jamming my penis into the disk drive and nothing happening. <laughs> it's a made for morons. Anyway. Um, I know everyone has one. It's like, oh, I go to Starbucks and write stuff. Anyway, we've done all this. Um, yes, where was I? I went off in some tenuous link. Uh, the cards do nothing! Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, look, so I bought these glasses and um, I was poncing around for, uh, for a long time. Uh, you know, people were saying, oh, you look great trying them on, you know. I, I looked fantastic, I'll be honest with you. you know, I, I finally had my look complete, and this only lasted for about a week, because one fateful night I uh, went out, and obviously I can, I'm old enough to drink in England, we had a couple of bottles of cheap student red, you know, the sort of wine when your student just says red wine. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> tastes like fermented vinegar, you know. And I, I was running along, sort of in a really quite, you know, homosexual way, and there's this big metal bar there, and I just trip over it. I'm going to trip over into it, and I've got this sort of Harry Potter-esque scar now, so I can sense danger whenever it's near on the outside. But it did leave me quite mutilated for about a week. Um, and the glasses, they disappeared. They fell off my face, they disappeared, no one could ever find them again. It's really God saying to you, don't be such a vain cunt. <laughs> so, uh, there you go, I'm going to go and find a dark cupboard to hide a weeping.